Welcome to Put a Word on It, a podcast presented by Men of Valor. In each episode, we're going to talk with a different man, but each one with a unique journey from brokenness to freedom. I'm your host, Rudy Kalis. I spent over 40 years as a TV sportscaster, then retired and joined the Men of Valor program as a volunteer. So join the conversation. Reconciling men to God, their families and society. Welcome to another edition of Put a Word on It, brought to you by Interstate AC. Good folks, we thank you for all of your help. I want you to meet a young fella. You know, sometimes we, we, we meet fellas that have been through some difficulties, but the idea being that they had bad grades and bad upbringings and all of that. In this case, it's a young man, intelligent, smart. He knew where he was going, he had a direction, but then drugs got involved with that. And now, through all that he's been through, which you're going to meet him on, he's now here with Men of Valor, and he's considered a sophomore. There are stages. First three months, you're a freshman. Next three months, you're a sophomore. He's a sophomore. He's an interesting young man. I want you to enjoy Keith West. Keith, you, did, you told me you grew up, what, near Athens, Georgia? Right outside of Athens, Gwinnett County. Tell me about growing up. Mom, dad, brothers, sisters, what you Well, had? um... I grew up in a military family. Ooh. Um, my parents were divorced when I was 10 years old. But, um, you know, I was born in Newport News, Virginia. I uh, lived in Germany for three years. Um, Alabama, uh, Oklahoma, I got really used to making new friends and um, starting over, really. Tell me about the military side. So your dad was in the military? Yes, sir. My dad was a pilot in the military. So you, you were living with him? I was living with both of them, but then when they got divorced, I moved to Georgia with my mom. Ah, uh, how old were you then? I was about 10 years old. Any other brothers or sisters? I have a sister. A little younger, older? She's younger. She went to Georgia Tech, so we don't talk very often. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad, a pilot. That's quite a job. Yeah, he was uh, did a lot of work with the H-64A Apache uh, in Yuma, Arizona back in the 80s. Well, all of that sounds like you had a nice nice childhood. Yeah, but what happened was uh, my parents split up, and I was at an age where I didn't really internalize what happened. Um, and in hindsight, I think uh, I blame myself, maybe even blame my mom some, um, for not having my father around. So I started using drugs at an early age. It just happened. And all of a sudden, I'm in Georgia, and he's got another life with a, with a new wife and, and new kids. I really didn't understand. I thought, maybe I'm not good enough, you know? Maybe, uh, maybe it's my fault that, you know, that he's not interested in his family. And it's more of a subconscious thing than a conscious one. You know, but as I look back, I think that's what it was. I think there's a, probably a lot of kids who have some of that. They appear, parents don't think about that when they get a divorce, that kids feel like it's their fault. Absolutely. It's a pretty natural reaction, I think. So how did you get started and what kind of drugs or what did you start with? Well, I started uh, smoking marijuana and, and taking uh, LSD and... Um, Wait a minute, this is like 11, 12? No, by, by then I was... I was about 14 or 15, you know, between 11 and 12, uh, that age, I was involved in sports, you know, and I was functioning pretty good. You know, I got along with people, but, you know, there's just always something where I felt a little distant from people. Um, and as I got a little bit older, I started using, using drugs recreationally and um, ended up where I, I dropped out of my high school. Um, but I dropped out of my high school and I talked to my mom and I said, Mom, you know, I want to go to a night school. There's a night school and I promise you that I'm going to finish it. And, and she, I got her blessing to do that. So I went to a place called Phoenix Alternative School. And for the next year and a half, I raised my grade point average up enough to get the Hope Scholarship to have free uh, tuition as long as I kept a 3.0 or above GPA. So, wow. But yeah. you're using at the same time? Yeah, I was. But but from the time that I graduated high school, I took, uh, I took a trip out to the Grand Teton National Park. And I started working for a summer out there. Um, and I really got exposed to a lot of nature and, and away from the people I was hanging around. 
and I got some momentum, you know. Um, so here I am. I've got a high school degree or a high school diploma. I've got a scholarship and I've got some rejuvenation. Um, I come back to Georgia and I enroll in a uh, true McConnell, which is a junior college right outside of Athens. Um, and for the next two years, I make 18 A's and one B. I have a, a 3.92 GPA, really successful at what I was doing, you know. Um, I then transferred to the University of Georgia. And for the next two years, I continue to make A's and B's. And you're still using drugs recreationally, as you call it, or not, you start to get deeper. Not as much because when I separated myself, I the drugs and the alcohol kind of went to the wayside, but I never dealt with the problem I had before. It's just something in life took me another direction, but that would come back later on. Um, because every time I've got some momentum in my life, the drugs and the alcohol have come back. Um, and that's been something that I, has been hard to understand. When did it start to get out of hand? I did a study abroad in, in England, in a place called Leicester, England, um, my senior year of college. I made the basketball team there. I got a chance to travel around uh, England and play basketball and, and meet a lot of people. And over in England, there's a little more drinking, you know, so that kind of started creeping up a little bit. But um, my travels took me to Wales, Ireland, Italy, France, Switzerland. Ooh. Um, I've been to China. I've been to Vietnam. I've, I've traveled extensively. But what happened was I come back from my travels and I didn't really have those new experiences um, that I was having daily being in a foreign country. I didn't really have anyone who could I could relate to as far as the path that I've been on. And I was also coming to a conclusion with my college degree um, and so I think I was a lot more nervous than I realized. And I was very isolated emotionally. Um, and I, I really started diving into alcohol and some other drugs just sabotaged the end of my college, you know. So it was anxiety. I, part of me was thinking when you were talking that maybe as you're looking for the next thrill, as long as you got a basketball place, to, some place to go, you got a thrill of something to look forward to. Now all of a sudden you got nothing to do but think. Exactly. What happened? How'd you get in? How'd the law get you? I no longer could afford what I was doing. And I started stealing. You know, I took a lot of things from a lot of people. Um, some people really close to me. And... It all caught up to me. I ended up with a, a really bad pill habit. And um, by the end of it, I had pretty much burned the relationships in my life. Um, bank account, girlfriends, everything. Just It just became about me and what was in my pocket or what I was what I was going to use. So you got arrested for, for uh, stealing? I did. I got arrested for, for theft. Um, and for a drug charge and i went to the county jail and i had to get all this you know these chemicals out of me and it was the toughest thing i've ever done in my life you know drying out on a uh, concrete floor in county jail um and that's when i when i cried out to god you know i just said i don't know you but don't leave me you know i just don't leave me alone right now and I spent three years incarcerated and I can honestly say I wasn't in a hurry to get out because I didn't really have anything to, to get out to. I applied to Men of Valor. I got a, um, a packet from them. And I remember uh, reading Romans 10, 9, where if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And I carried all this grief and, and guilt and shame around for so long. And I just realized that I didn't have to anymore. You know, the name of the program is put a word on it. Have you got a word that comes to your mind? I do, Rudy. My, my word is direction. Um, and there's some scripture. Uh, I believe it's Proverbs chapter four, verse 26 and 27. Uh, Ponder the path of your feet then all your ways will be sure. 
Do not turn to the left or to the right, but turn your foot from evil. And to ponder means to weigh in one's mind or consider. And I'm using God's word as my compass, if you will. And, and Jesus and his testimony and his truths as my, as my personal guide. Um, and by repenting for my sins, I've turned my foot from evil. And I know that if I just follow this path, that it will end up in greener pastures. I think you will. I love the way you've answered. You realize the truth. Keith, look forward to some great things in your life. Thank you, Rudy. Boy, I enjoyed talking to him. Let me put a little word on it. I like direction. We hadn't had that before. And the fact that that's where he wants to go. He looks like a young man who really knows now where he is headed. You know, he wanted to smile real big, but you may have noticed he didn't have any teeth. And I said, where'd that come from? He said, well, if it's from the drugs and from the sugar and from the meth and all the things were there. And I know you're going to get that fixed. Yeah, that's the first thing when I can get enough money. I would rather have good teeth so I could smile real big than to have a car. You're going to get that. Keith. You've been a joy to be around. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next time for another edition of Put a Word on It. <laughs>